So when you're building a cloud solution, you obviously have to be able to size all of the components. We're going to talk on this video about sizing the server itself and how virtual CPUs, cores, and processors, RAM, and storage all impact that decision and those cost variables that you need in order to size the cloud properly. So here we're drawing out a cloud uh, with a server in it with two physical chips. Two physical chips. On each one of those processing chips, we have two cores. So that is a dual core, dual chip, dual processor server. So again, physical chips, two, and we have two cores per physical chip. That gives us a total of four cores. Why do we need to know the number of cores? Because our calculation variable is built upon the number of cores, the number of cores. So here we have four cores within this system total. And so let's go ahead and put the variable. Now we're defining 10 virtual CPUs per core. 10 virtual CPUs per core. So we're going to take four cores and we're going to multiply that by 10. Now let's say that you're not comfortable with 10 virtual CPUs per core. Okay. Put five virtual CPUs per core. Whatever you feel is the best for your environment, size it that way. But here we're going with 10 virtual CPUs, which gives us a total of 40 virtual CPUs total on this box. If this box is configured, we'll support. But let's throw 320 gigs of RAM in there just for conversation's sake. And then let's add storage in there at 100 gigabytes per VM. Per VM. So this is a little bit different. Um, I put per user, but really we're talking per VM, per user. It doesn't matter. So let's do some of the math. Here. The first thing we have to define is what is the virtual machine? What does it made of? Remember, all virtual machines are not alike, just like our physical server. So here, let's define that we have two virtual CPUs per machine, eight gigabytes of RAM, and a hundred gigabytes in a RAID zero plus one hundred gigabytes available, right? Usable. So let's do some of the math here. Let's take those two virtual CPUs per. We have 40 total. That's going to give us a total of 20 VMs. 20 VMs, okay? So we're going to have a total of 20 virtual machines. And I know I just made a mistake there on 20 VCB. I'm going to go back and correct it in a minute. So here we have our RAM. We have 320 gigabytes of RAM. So how are we going to calculate that? Well, we're going to take 20 virtual machines, and we're going to multiply that out by... 8 gigs of RAM. So 20 times 8 equals 160 gigs of RAM. This is going to give us about 50% capacity. So we're going to have some extra RAM. Why? Because some of your boxes may use 16, some may use less, some may use more virtual CPUs. So it's just you know, how you slice it up. And then we're going to put 100 gig per user usable. So that means it's 200 gig in a RAID 0 plus 1 configuration. And then let's add on to there, just throw in for backup, grandfathers, archives, things of that nature. Let's double that capacity size. So add another 200 gig, and we'll come up with a total of 400 gig. Now, do you have to add that? No. But you see how I'm doing the math? You can do it yourself. So, again, 40 gigabytes, uh, 400, excuse me, 400 gigabytes per VM. Let's go ahead and change that. Because really we're talking about 20 virtual machines here with those 40 virtual, 40 virtual CPUs. And here we have 400 gig. We're going to times that out by 20. Why 20? Because remember, 20 is the number of virtual machines we have. We're going to come up with 8,000 gigabytes of storage needed to support this cloud effort. So let's review here real quick. So we've defined some key attributes here. Uh, related to this provided solution, the solution that we're going to provide. So this cloud is going to support 20 virtual machines configured as two virtual CPUs per machine per VM and 8 gigabytes of RAM per VM and 100 gigabyte of usable RAID 10 disk with disk to disk backup included. So this is full, complete um, you know, disk utilization, right? And so that's kind of the configuration uh, that we have to support this user. Again, to do this, we need to define how many physical chips and cores there are. We need to define how many virtual CPUs per core we're going to use. 
We need to define what the virtual machine is, and now we know what the cloud is.